Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Co-Director at the LA County USC Medical Center in Los Angeles, California, and welcome to Sound Bites. Welcome back to Sound Bites Ultrasound and part two of the Bedside DVT Ultrasound Evaluation. Hopefully you've had a chance to complete part one of the module prior, looking at the normal anatomy of the leg veins and normal compression examination looking for a DVT. In this module part two, we'll specifically examine positive DVT examinations using the focused exam to look at the femoral and popliteal veins. A DVT will be identified by a failure of venous compression using the high frequency probe. We'll wrap up the module by looking at some DVT mimics and alternative findings that you may encounter on bedside ultrasound examination of the leg. To reemphasize the positive findings on lower extremity DVT ultrasound, a thrombose vein will not completely compress with pressure down by the high frequency probe. We may be able to observe echogenic material within the vessel lumen consistent with a clot, but that has to do with the age of a clot. Fresh clot may be more echogenic or bright in nature, whereas older clot may be more organized and darker or hypoechoic on bedside ultrasound examination. This video clip is taken from a patient who presented to the emergency department with a painful and swollen leg. We're using Doppler flow to first identify the target femoral artery and vein. We can see here the Doppler pulsations within the femoral artery noted lateral or towards the left of the image. We see here the femoral vein towards the right or towards the medial aspect of the image and note the lack of Doppler flow. Looking within the vessel, we can see swirls of thrombus within the femoral vein consistent with clot. And we note also the saphenous vein on top of the femoral vein is also thrombosed. We note here that there is no Doppler pulsations within the femoral vein as a result of blockage due to the clot. Now that we've identified the target femoral artery and vein using Doppler flow, we can switch over to grayscale or B-mode sonography. Here we're looking at the femoral artery as it bifurcates into the profundus and superficialis arteries, and we note here towards the medial aspect of the artery or towards the right, the femoral vein. Again, looking within the femoral vein, we see swirls of echogenic clot consistent with fresh thrombus, and we note again that the saphenous vein off the top of the femoral vein appears clotted as well. So our next move would be to apply compression down onto the vessels to look for compressibility of the vein. Here we note we're compressing down with a high frequency linear array type probe and we can see indentation of the femoral arteries towards the left, but note here the failure of compression of the femoral vein due to the presence of thrombus within the lumen, and we can see the thrombus moving around as we press down with the probe. Again, a positive DVT exam based on the fact of failure of compression of the femoral vein. Now let's look at another video clip showing a positive DVT in a patient presenting to the emergency department with a painful and swollen leg. We're using Doppler flow again to target the femoral vessels and we see the pulsations of the femoral artery lateral to the femoral vein. We note here the absence of flow within the femoral vein, suspicious for a DVT, but our next move would be to apply compression down with the probe. Here we're compressing with a high frequency linear type array probe directly onto the femoral vein and we note the failure of compression of the vessel. We can also see a rocking movement of the thrombus within the lumen of the vessel. Notice that it rocks back and forth as we apply pressure down with the probe. Again, a positive finding for a DVT of the femoral vein. This video clip was taken from a post-surgical patient with a painful swollen leg. We're applying compression down to the common femoral vessels and we notice right away a positive finding within the femoral vein. We see here echogenic swirls of clot and notice the failure of compression of the vein with probe pressure. Here we also see the saphenous vein towards the anterior part of the image above the femoral vein also with clot formation and we notice that the saphenous vein fails to compress down with probe pressure. Now let's move down the leg and look specifically at the popliteal vein. Here are two video clips towards the left a B mode or grayscale sonography image and towards the right color flow Doppler. We identified the popliteal vein as seen towards the top of the image, effectively posterior to the popliteal artery. And we can identify the color flow flashes, the pulsations of the popliteal artery as seen deep to the image here. Notice the echogenic swirls of clot within the popliteal vein and to the left here we're compressing down and we note the popliteal vein fails to compress secondary to the DVT. This video clip was taken from a patient who presented with a painful swollen calf. We identified the popliteal vein as seen to the top of the image or posterior in relation to the popliteal artery, which is seen here anteriorly or towards the bottom of the image. 
Now we're pressing down with the probe, applying pressure to the popliteal vein, and we notice a positive finding. The popliteal vein fails to compress with direct probe pressure. Now what's interesting, as in contrast to other clips in this module, we don't really identify the swirls of ecogenic clot within this popliteal vein. Thus, this was an older clot that had been more organized with time, thus giving a darker appearance, more hypoechoic in nature. Now let's turn to a discussion of some potential pitfalls within DVT ultrasonography. In the femoral region, lymph nodes may appear as a thrombosed vein with a failure to compress on bedside sonography. Therefore, it's very important to adequately determine the location of the femoral artery and vein and compare that to the location of the lymph node. The lymph node will be a single structure unlike the paired femoral vessels. Also, the lymph node will usually be seen more superficial to the vascular structures of the femoral artery and vein. Here's an example of a femoral lymph node. Notice that it has the appearance of what could be construed as a DVT. We see the node, and it looks like it has echogenic material within it, but this is the normal ultrasound finding of a lymph node. Notice that it's a single structure and not related to the common femoral artery as a DVT would be within the common femoral vein. Here we change the magnification or the depth of the ultrasound image to better investigate the lymph node in its relation to the femoral vessels. Note the single node, the femoral node seen superficial to the femoral vessels as seen deep within the image. Note that the node is single in contrast to the paired femoral vessels seen deeper. As we progress down the leg, we can encounter another potential pitfall within the realm of DVT ultrasound, and that is the alternative finding of a Baker's cyst. A Baker's cyst can be encountered just behind the knee within the popliteal region. This cyst can result from an outpouching of synovial fluid from the knee joint, usually in patients with advanced arthritis. Unfortunately, the Baker's cyst can rupture, spreading inflammatory joint fluid down the leg and can present very similarly to a DVT. This video clip demonstrates the typical appearance of an unruptured Baker's cyst. This Baker's cyst was found in the popliteal region of a patient who was referred to the emergency department for a swelling behind the knee. Here we see the typical appearance of a cyst, that is, that of a dark or anechoic fluid collection on bedside sonography. In this video clip, we're going to change the depth of the ultrasound image to better interrogate the Baker's cyst in its relation to the popliteal artery and vein. Here we see the single superficial Baker's cyst to the right in its relation to the popliteal artery and vein seen deeper on the image and to the left. And note that they have very different appearances that the Baker's cyst is a single structure in contrast to the paired popliteal vessels. In this video clip, we see a large ruptured Baker's cyst tracking down the calf and closely approximating a DVT on clinical examination. We see a short axis view to the left, and I'm going to start with the probe high within the popliteal fossa right here. I'm going to move the probe down the calf, and we can see that the fluid collection spreads all the way down the calf. In the long axis view to the right, I'm going to start by showing the superior axis to the left and inferior to the right and we can see the fluid collection of the ruptured Baker cyst tracking from superior all the way inferiorly down the calf. So thanks for tuning in for this Sound Bites module going over bedside DVT examination part two. Now you've learned the focus bedside DVT ultrasound examination and can quickly evaluate both the femoral and popliteal veins for clot. This can be a very helpful examination in working up those patients with a swollen and painful leg, allowing for initiation of timely and appropriate therapy. This bedside DVT examination can also be used to look for DVT in cases of suspected pulmonary embolus. So I hope to see you back in the future as Soundbites continues.